So again, my name is Cynthia Casper, and it was last year about this time that I happened to meet uh, Pam uh, Richard, and we started to put our heads together and discovered that we had um, similar vision, and that vision is uh, one of a sustainable community. And um, my idea was, and the way I used to articulate it was, we really need to have the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, everything right, readily available in our community so that we could uh, begin to be self-reliant and sustainable. The best so, thing about the Transition Towns movement is there is no hierarchy, and once we get our momentum going, we go away, and all of you take over. You know, I have Pico on climate change here because the two of them uh, are feeding each other, whether they want it to or not. It's, it's getting into a uh, point now where they're starting to create their own feedback loops. On. Uh, you, you notice the collaboration that's happening between these groups? And that's what we're trying, what we want to do is we want to collaborate with all of these groups because as you're saying, the steps are need, are bigger than the people in this room, right? So first of all, we have all the Mississippi. We know how to get the technology we need. And we know that's the out of ground. We have to pull it forward. But um, just because that's the transportation networks that, that, that are uh, in here. I'm not sure if you said it was in the children. It probably was. But, you know, as a student, it's more involved in the beginning of the family. Analysis, and then that's really going to be kind of like a gap analysis that this is what we have, this is where we want to go, what do we need to do? From that current analysis, there needs to be education and awareness basically kind of creating a, a common sense of economic relationships where you have the collective and the, uh, cooperation for the greater good of the whole. So tell everyone just thinking about the interview. We thought about getting teachers to go to Chicago Conservation Corps uh, workshops. They actually could get grants to get a student group together that would focus on issues of energy usage and water usage within the schools. Uh, another thing we started thinking about was ways in which we could get more sol solar panels attached to schools um, along those lines, talking about uh, integrating uh, environmental jobs into the school curriculum. Instruments. So the main things that we need to do are we need to, to identify which skills we're going to need in, the, in 2020, and we need to identify those today so that we can learn them by then. <laughs> Uh -huh, more or less, and so that's, that's going to be a long process. And then we need to actually learn those skills, and not just the people in this room, but everybody in the community um, will need to, you know, just like we now know how to navigate complex sort of financial institutions, we're going to be able to need then to know how to grow our own food, to compost, to can, and so forth. Um, so the big need that, that we see is soil testing and remediation, and, and that should be available uh, ideally locally and very inexpensively. And maybe, we might need to buy or remediate some of our soils. Yes, but we it probably, would, probably do. Yeah. Um, but but um, identify, you know, having that as a baseline, like what's already down there, and then we can go from there and, and you know, build more soil and that kind of thing. Um, education, uh, every school in Rogers Park should have a garden, uh, composting, should, should have the works for the kids. And, um, community gardens, um, an orchard, kitchen, uh, like a public kitchen, uh, skill sharing, uh, livestock, which is kind of a skill in and of itself. Bees, chickens. <laughs> yeah, rabbits, whatever. Uh, maybe find some new uh, livestock. And then um, identifying food transportation corridors. And in, in Rogers Park, we, you know, right now we have the metro. The red line. No, why we need a real education around green concepts, like Lee and the German Passive House uh, concept. The notion that you can make changes and uh, upgrade and improve your property so it's more energy efficient without having to spend a whole lot of money. And there was a feeling in the group that there's some real education that needs to occur around there. People assume that retrofitting means big bucks and not necessarily. And they're going to be starting to write up a vision statement. Because unless we know where we're going, and we started that tonight really strongly, uh, we might go the wrong place. Or we might not get there on time, right? We might not get there ever. So, so we're going to be doing that. And then what we hope to be doing is taking these vision narrative statements and putting them in, in publications like the Urban Coaster. 
so that everybody can start seeing them. So it's not just these little few of us here, but everybody else gets energized and knows what we're doing and can come on and join us too. <laughs>